Okay, what we're going to tie now is one of my uh, stone fly patterns. Can be quite a tricky little fly to tie, mainly because of the wing cases, just need cutting out, but um, we'll get to that in a minute. In the vise, we've got a stone fly hook. It's a stone fly or clink hammer size 12 hook. What we're going to do is we're going to catch in some black in the eight. We'll catch it and go in the eye. We're just going to run the thread down right down and around the bend as we're in touching turns it's just getting a, a bit of thread down really and we're just going to take that down quite close to the bend like that so we should do fine and we'll just trim that off and take a black goose biots just get two goose biots Trim those off. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie those in as a tail. Trying to level them up. Okay, once you've got those level, just going to pop those either side. A bit tricky on these hooks. I'm just going to pop a pinch and loop in either side, give it a pull. thread round a couple of times, take the thread through and then just put it around just to keep them separated. Now we're just going to take the thread up over the loose bits, right around the corner, back up about three quarters of the way or a quarter of the way back from the eye. Now we've got some 0.5mm tubing, straightforward olive tubing, and we're just going to catch that in at that three quarter point there. Just put it across. Now pull the tube in tight and take thread wraps right round, keeping it tight all the way down. This is going to be the body. Keep your thread wraps nice and tight all the way around. Okay, I just want to end it roughly by the tail where where we tied the tail in. Okay. Now what we want to do is take some dental floss. Straightforward dental floss. Okay, so we're going to pull that out. So we've got length. And we're just going to catch this in. At that point. Catch them out. Now take the thread back up. So that three quarter point there. Now with dental floss, lick your fingers, and just run it up. And the reason for dental floss is, is we can build our body up, but it'll also shape our body without adding too much weight. Because the reason I came up with this one is because fishing rivers, and rivers are not that deep, and I just wanted something that was going to come along the bottom but not dig dig down too much. So this seems an ideal way of doing it. So I'll take the dental floss up, put it back down. All we're doing is we're just forming up forming the body now. strange, just build up your body until you're happy with the shape of what you want. Once you are, take it down and then just catch it off. Trim away the surplus and 
take some tight turns just to secure that end in. Now we want to shape the body, so take a good pair of pliers, get in there and give it a squeeze. Okay, so we've got a nice squeeze and that will flatten the body out and give it some shape. Okay, so if I turn it around slightly, you can see it's flattened. It's flattened the dental floss. It's great stuff, dental floss, for, for like modelling bodies and different bits and bobs. Okay, anyway, now it's going to wind our rib and body round. So, we'll place that in there. A little bit of a pull. Take your time doing this and keep it nice and level side by side. Bring them up side by side, all the way up. So I'll tell you time doing this bit because it can be a little bit, a little bit tricky. Okay, so just bring it right round, all the way up to where the thread is, and then finally just cross the thread underneath. Pull it down tight. Take a couple of good turns over the top of it. One underneath just to secure it. And then just trim it off. Okay, now that's our body in place. So now what we do is we're going to take the thread down, right down to the eye. Now we'll take it back up again. Wind it right all the way back up. And then finally, take it down again. Just building up the front end a little bit, that's all. Right, now when we get to there, okay, we're going to take a couple of ball bristles. And what I'm going to do is just catch those underneath the thread there. too much about how long they're going to be just yet. Just pull them down, take a couple of turns over the top to secure them in place. Now just separate them. So put a figure of eight round one through. So you've got a figure of eight round that one. Back round. And pop a figure of eight just beyond that one, just to separate them. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take the thread down Tying down the other ends of the bristles down to the body. Okay. Now what we're going to do is just take a pair of scissors, get in there, and snip those off. Now the length of these, we need to trim them up. Now again, there's no set pattern. What I don't do is use a needle, and from the bend of the body to the eye of the hook something like that, get them in there, so we know roughly how long they need to be, sharp pair of scissors, and just trim them off, that's about the length I'd use them for, okay, so, right, do longer, shorter, entirely up to you, okay, right, now we've got this piece here, we'll just wind it back a little bit, just so we're going up on top of the body when we started the body. Now the wing cases. This is the fun bit. This is where you need a bit of cutting coming in. What we got is some black waterproof ribbon. You can get it from florist shops or um, hobby craft or somewhere like that will do. It's literally just black, quite thick ribbon. And what we need to do is we need to cut shape out of a wing case. Now if I can just grab one of these wing cases, that is the shape we need to cut. And what I find you do 